The impact gaming soundtracks have on us is immense. As distorted as our introductory destructive duet was, I'm sure that short clip is all you needed to recognize the iconic theme of Super Mario Brothers. What we hear plays a crucial role in providing context for a game. Sound and music give cognitive responses in the brain that interact with emotions and memory. If you felt a wave of nostalgia when I swapped to Zelda's lullaby, that's the effect in action. A more basic example would be the sound of an ambulance. When you hear that siren, you instantly know what it means before any thought occurs. Composers have to take these reactions, the direction of scenes, the goal of the developers, and the experience of players to craft a soundtrack to match each and every moment of the game. Making a gaming soundtrack is a tall order, so today I'd like to celebrate the best of the best with you. Narrowing it down to just 10 was difficult in its own right. I started by limiting it to one game per franchise, then I used the following criteria. Game cohesion. How well does the soundtrack mesh with the game? Emotional evocation. How well does the soundtrack elicit an emotional response? Dynamic range. How much variation and depth is there within the composition? Individual listenability. How enjoyable is a listen outside of the game itself? And the banger tally. How many tracks are absolute fire? Or better to say, exemplary tracks of the other four criteria. As much as I tried to quantify and standardize my choices, please remember I'm no music expert and taste is subjective. I'll do my best to go deeper than sounds nice and music good, me like. But don't expect more than a trip down memory lane and getting some great recommendations for your gaming playlists. Finally, a quick spoiler warning for each game. Discussing the soundtrack's association with pivotal moments is inevitable, so refer to timestamps if you'd like to skip an entry. Without further ado, here are my choices for the top 10 best gaming soundtracks of all time. Number 10, Doom 2016. This game revitalized the Doom franchise with the power of Mick Gordon's metal surging through it. The music defines every second of the game's top-notch gameplay. They up the ante off each other back and forth until the action is climaxing all over the screen and your ears. It's adrenaline overdrive in the best way possible. I'm personally not a big metal guy. Outside of a few select tracks that rip and tear through my workout playlist, this isn't something I'd really listen to on a leisurely day. I would also argue that despite the music's excellent cohesion and range within the game, the full soundtrack is somewhat repetitive in its sounds. The few bangers I'd recommend to metalheads and normies alike would be Rip and Tear, a song that relentlessly assails your ears full blast until it is done. Hellwalker is an intricate track with a deliberate pace, a slow tempo riding into a gradual crescendo of sounds cascading in and out as the beat drops periodically. Cyber Demon's theme features a choir screaming how I totally wasn't inside, then dogs panting? Must be salivating at your prospective demise. My personal favorite is BFG Division. The bass heavy intro is what I imagine the Doom Slayer's heartbeat sounds like, not because he's scared. Because he's enjoying himself so much. The beat keeps rising, rising, and rising until the tension releases into full-on musical nirvana. The quintessential Doom song, one that embodies everything there is to love about Doom 2016's soundtrack. Number 9, Spyro the Dragon. A heavy hitter in the early 3D platformer era, the landscapes, creative monsters, and ambiance were made magical by its soundtrack. The sense of adventure and scale composer Stuart Copeland was able to instill was potent. The former drummer of the police uses stylings to make a bountiful harvest of fantasy tunes. Well, let me start something. Let me write something yeah. for you. Okay, yeah, so there's a bass line. Now let's get some heavy metal going here. Okay. They pay me for this. You earned every penny. The interview goes on to mention how he'd make depth within these loops to make them enjoyable on repeat listens. It's impressive how much variety there is within the similar techniques he uses. Even so, listenability is somewhat hampered by the dated limitations and the songs being more appropriate as pieces of a colorful world rather than their own main feature. The title screen is exactly the sort of rock and whimsy that gets the adventure off on the right foot. Level tracks like Stone Hill are more rapid in tempo with a solid flow. The slower portions give an ethereal feeling, creating grand scale in a deceptively small stage. Hell, Wizard Peak is so nice he used it twice, remixing it to be the title theme for Nickelodeon's The Amanda Show back in the 90s. Homeworlds like Dream Weavers have a frantic pace to match the mischievous denizens within, and its boss Jacques adds to a chaotic track with choruses riffing on the main title, the list goes off. It's truly a magical soundtrack that played an integral role in Spyro the Dragon becoming what he did. Number 8, Hollow Knight. 
As a Metroidvania, music is vital to shaping the tone. The tracks from start to finish are carefully chosen to match each area and boss with expert precision. It's a surprisingly relaxing and somber album, though there are plenty of excitable battle tracks that deviate. The emotional complexity throughout gives it weight, the album is thematically consistent, if a bit too similar at times, but those likenesses do help the world feel like part of a greater whole. Their range still has enough distinction to make for some notable entries. Another title screen gem, Hollow Knight's titular theme, has a soothing piano melody backed by volatile strings toward the end that suggests something sinister beneath the surface. A nice ode to the game. Green Pass shows the area's character with playful beats and bright sounds. Boss themes such as Mantis Lords and body controlled chaos fitting of the fast paced duel, while the DLC adds a more intense version for the Sisters of Battle 3v1. Getting into that DLC, Nightmare King's theme slaps harder than the boss itself, which is saying something considering how deeply I revere his difficulty. The organ, drums, horns, and chorus all play in tandem at a magnificent pace in an intricate composition. No track is more involved in the emotional journey of the sealed vessel. The significant range it's able to convey in a short time adds immense weight to the penultimate or perhaps final battle for Hollow Nest. Which of course isn't against your boy Zoe. You didn't think I'd forget a theme with lyrics so deep. Okay, it's not that deep, but that's supposed to be the point. You can serenade me anytime, Zoe. As can Christopher Larkin. I've spent over a hundred hours enjoying the stylings of Hollow Nest while getting pummeled in the pantheons for hours. And hours and and hours, and hours, and hours. Thanks to today's sponsor, GMG Performance, you can get all the gaming hours your heart desires without the dangers of blue light. Between gaming, phone, and web browsing, Netflix binges, and the work from home lifestyle, I spend at least half of my waking hours in front of a screen. If you're anything like me, subjecting yourself to a daily buffet of blue light gives you dry eye and wicked headaches. It's gotten so bad I even have eye drops on standby right next to my keyboard. GMG Performance offers a stylus shield with their blue light protection lenses to remedy these ailments. Since GMG sent me two pairs of shades, I've noticed a marked decrease in dry eye and headaches during long screen time. If you'd like to protect your own peepers, in style, GMG is offering 40% off for the next 48 hours via my link in the description. Thanks to GMG for sponsoring today's video and thank you for listening. Number 7, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes When I think Metroid soundtrack, I think atmosphere. Deep choirs entrenched in the world's spirituality, eerie sci-fi synth, and the gritty rock that heralds in the darkness of Prime 2. With the game's ambient environmental sounds and combat being the only other notable noise, the music is crucial to evoking emotions from the player. These are generated through a mixture of bizarre, sharp tones and calmer, more relaxed ones. The game's light and dark theme is echoed by this in the soundtrack with a constant struggle between serene and erratic beats. This can make the soundtrack a fascinating listen outside of the game, though admittedly the similar style of some tracks might make it better as a highlight reel. Teeing off with some of my favorites, start again from the very title screen. All the choirs, sci-fi synthwave, monstrous groans, and gritty rock you'd expect are on full display. I especially love the twisted homage to the original's theme that makes a tonal distinction in line with the sequel's direction. Even the menu select screen slaps. The sick synthwave beat is accompanied by spooky sounds to set the mood. Splinter Hive is drenched in atmosphere. A slow, faint heartbeat accompanied by listless wind, or perhaps breathing. A low roar that echoes back to Prime's Chozo ruins. Sounds fade in and out, keeping the tension ever present. This is the poster child of many moody tunes that dominate the album. Then you've got Torvis Bog, hands down one of my favorite Metroid tracks. Closing my eyes, it's as if I feel the rain hitting my visor, right there in the bog. This up-tempo beat contrasts the slower drain of the moodier tracks. The Dark Torvis Bog theme fits right in with those in a special hell. It sounds like a strangled version of the original masterpiece. The melody struggles to find the light in this dreary version, completely immersing you in a feeling of helplessness. The entire album balances this yin-yang structure masterfully. In a series full of standout tracks, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes stands tall among them. Number 6, Bloodborne. It was difficult to ascertain where Bloodborne belonged on the list, if at all. This is due to the generally music-free experience until you reach the bosses. How it ended up here is that I love that aspect of FromSoft games the most, and in similar quality, the tracks that accompany them are astounding. Bloodborne's boss themes evoke feelings of dread, sorrow, fear, danger, intensity, fight or flight, and motivation to stop the suffering. Not really something I'd consider to be casual listening material, but the creepy nature and intense orchestrals match the game brilliantly. 
Not every song is explosive either. The composers knew when to bring grandeur into a theme and when they should remain subdued. On the more vivid end, there's Cleric Beast. You'd think you're running into a dead end for some paltry loot, and you get ambushed by this, and this is what plays. Classic FromSoft soul crushing bait. I'd give a shout out to the occult vibe the Witches of Hemwick melody gives off, but they'll be dead before you hear the meat of it. Rather, I'd like to shine a spotlight on the lesser recognized moonlit melody that plays in the Hunter's Dream in the endgame. It's a more melancholy version of the original after the game's darkest secrets have been laid bare. This is preceded by Lullaby for Mergo, an unsettling callback to Gascoigne's daughter in a track that is far distinguished from anything else. Of course, both of these themes are followed by tonight, Garriman joins the hunt. This remarkable track oozes the agony of a man trapped in a never-ending nightmare of his own design, his resolve to free you from taking on that burden while it slowly pushes you to relieve it from him. It's wild to say after all that, that the DLC might hold the majority of the most remarkable tracks. Ludwig the Accursed in Holy Blade has my favorite transition of all time. Watching a madman horse pull himself from the grips of insanity to spell your doom is marvelously frightening. The primordial blue goobers have no business with a track as good as they have, considering the content it's attached to. Lady Maria's track is one of the most relentless in the game, hardly giving you a moment to breathe, a soulmate to its accompanying battle. And finally, Lawrence the First Vicar has perhaps the most dynamic track in the game that beautifully tells the tragic fall of Lawrence. If you can hear it over. <laughs> It should be telling how fantastic this soundtrack is that it made it nearly to the top 5 on boss music alone. It's one of my favorite games of all time, soundtrack included. Number 5, Fire Emblem Three Houses. The first entry on our list to really blow away the dynamic category. Putting aside the immense compositional depth that goes into each track, the variance in battle music is a signature effect. The player strategically commands forces as a track plays. As you enter battle with a student, the music swaps to a more frenetic version to punch in the combat. This means every one of the incredible battle tracks has two versions. This added effort goes a long way to building cohesiveness. The tracks hold enormous emotional ties as well. So many songs relate to specific moments or even an overall tone across multiple scenes. It's remarkable how well they hold up across the different routes, each of which offers new great tunes. The soundtrack is excellent for studies, workouts, or plain enjoyment as an outside listener. Blue Skies in a Battle is the battle rally against your own peers in a mock battle, a profound piece that grows in energy in two equal parts until a bombastic conclusion. This theme returns in Between Heaven and Earth, a more desperate rendition used years later in your return to Grander Field. The Thunder version in particular captures the merciless brutality of war that pits you against your former allies to the death. Speaking of death, what you're now hearing is the anthem of a broken Dimitri slamming critical hits across a blood-soaked battlefield. A pivotal moment in the Blue Lion's route, the song depicts the extent of his descent into madness. God Shattering Star is a fitting name for this operatic, explosive finale track. An ode to death march against the strongest villain in history and his legendary squadron. The energy is dialed up to 11 in tandem with your motivation to save the future. Another ending features a funeral of flowers, a sorrowful masterpiece that snapshots how music enhances emotional climaxes, a melody of malice in the face of necessary evil. In a stark change to all the other frenetic thunder themes designed for the moment you strike, that version is even more tragic, simply unforgettable. Swap that to dubstep, dropping the bass on a complete genre shift into the layer of otherworldly foes that slither beneath as you watch. Back to the emotional heights with indomitable will, a blood oath to slay anyone necessary in the pursuit of a better tomorrow for all, no matter your personal bonds. The spirit die, the ethereal theme of the goddess inside you, and awakening. An explosive version of that song that entrusts you with her hope for the future. I really could go on, but instead I'll point out that this is number five on the list. We still have four to go, the getting's good. Number four, Persona 5 Royal. Persona is all about style. Its unique musical flair is an irreplaceable part of that. Of any gaming soundtrack, this is the one I would universally recommend anyone listen to. It's purely an enjoyable ride, game or not. That said, there are a lot of tracks clearly meant as a mild, reusable backdrop that are less compelling to individually listen to on repeat. Most of the bangers are songs to get you incredibly hyped for what's happening in the game. Persona knows its style and generally sticks to it, but there is some great range within that genre and a lot of dynamic versions of tracks for rainy days and instrumental versions to set up later lyrical punches. These end up being 
the most memorable, starting with the hype heist tracks Life Will Change, The Whims of Fate, and Rivers in the Desert. The signature battle tracks from Vanilla with Last Surprise and Take Over from Royal are equally fantastic and deserve loads of credit for holding up over hundreds of hours. All the way up to the climactic songs that ring in the end such as With the Stars and Us, I Believe, and Throw Away Your Mask. An especially profound track that's written from the perspective of Royal's signature villain. Daily Life is highlighted by Beneath the Mask and its many variations, an infusion of melancholy bliss into the monotony of day-to-day -day tasks. Finally, No More What Ifs feels like a real blues night at a soulful club. Forgive me for blazing through all these tracks, but most can be summed up shortly. There's a ton of pizzazz in all that jazz. It passes the ear test and makes crucial moments in the game that much more special. The lyrics by Lin and Izumi make these feel like a studio album for a record label. The polish and cohesive touch is exceptional. While these are the standouts, it shouldn't be understated how effective the rest of the soundtrack works across Persona 5's lengthy run. They add tons of character to each and every bit of the world and its characters. From top to bottom, this soundtrack stole my heart. Number 3, Chrono Trigger. I'm pretty sure Yasunori Mitsuda figured out how to bottle the essence of life and time and used it as a symphonic elixir to create this masterpiece. There is so much vibrance and emotion inside these 16-bit tracks. They are truly timeless against their modern competitors. The dreamlike tracks transport you to another world, easily one of my favorite soundtracks to pop on and have an existential think. As I do, I can't help but marvel at the many distinguished full compositions there are against all the technical odds of the air. Many of them hold iconic ties to characters or moments in the game that can elicit huge responses from fans. Take Peaceful Days, for example, a song that emulates a day laying in the grass, the temperature just right, the breeze blows softly over the meadow, sun beaming warmth down upon you to make sure the wind doesn't bring too much of a chill, and a comforting sensation that everything is going to be okay. All that from a single track, an important feeling to embrace in the calm before the coming storm. A storm beginning at the Guardia Millennial Fair, accompanied by a fanciful track full of whimsy and spirit appropriate for such a playful event. In a polar opposite, tracks like Ruined World give an air of creepiness and desolation. The listless melody sweeps you into a wormhole of distorted nothingness. Then to brave bold themes like frogs, you can feel the essence of honor, pride, and grace oozing from every note of the track. Each character gets similar themes that convey traits about them through song in a memorable way. It's a shame I never had an opportunity to gush about Chrono Trigger on my channel. At least let me take this opportunity to praise its soundtrack as one of the best of all time. My personal favorite in any JRPG. Number 2, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Perhaps a controversial choice over Wind Waker's excellent music, Skyward Sword gets my nod as the first fully realized orchestral soundtrack in Zelda, something the composers always wanted to do but couldn't fully achieve due to technical limitations of previous generations. They went all out for the 25th anniversary during Skyward Sword's release and did shows. Each theme is perfectly crafted for its purpose within the game. Their charm creates a grandiose soundtrack akin to a classic adventure film. It's also absolutely fantastic as a standalone listen if you enjoy orchestral themes. There's so much emotion, imagination, and spirit within each tune. The depth of the composition and variety across the soundtrack is marvelous. Let our first banger, Ballad of the Goddess, be the proof in the symphonic pudding. The first time I heard this theme, it had an airy nostalgia. It has a lively energy to match the relentless courage of the hero, with elegance befitting the wisdom of the goddess. This ballad is the anthem of awakening for Hylia's reincarnated soul in Zelda. What if I told you it wasn't only reincarnated in its purpose, but also its composition? First time I heard this, I was speechless. The song intended to awaken the goddess within Zelda is her iconic lullaby in reverse. That's a mastercraft of storytelling through music if I've ever seen one. The track isn't alone. From the very opener with The Legend of Skyloft, we're treated to an intricate arrangement with multiple acts, each boasting vast emotional range. Without the accompanying cutscene, this piece could still tell a story all on its own. They even went whole hog on the file select screen for the best version of this iconic theme over Zelda's 35-year history. 
Skyloft features a welcoming melody exuding warmth, perfect for the one true hub in any of the Zelda games. Within it, catchy themes like the Bazaar show their depth and how it slightly alters based on which shop you approach. I cannot understate how little touches like this make a more robust and enchanting world. Grus's theme is another notable track with several renditions. The Standard, The Silly, The Romantic, and even Grusland, the wondrous kingdom that much to Grus's dismay settled on Hyrule for its name. What starts as the theme for a grating buffoon grows into a glorious signature for a lovable oaf with his own significance in the world. Crimson Loftwing is a fantastical trio of strings, flutes, and French horn with the latter two dancing as Skylian and Loftwing. This playful theme captures the essence of flight, a theme of many Miyazaki films, one that feels inspirational to this soundtrack. Follow Fee's mysterious melody lures you to uncover your destiny in the greater world beyond Skyloft. There are many versions of this piece, but this subtler take with raw sounds captures the lure of adventure beautifully. If you thought light, airy themes were all you were going to get from this soundtrack, take the dire crash of Girahim's theme. After his frighteningly captivating introduction, this track embodies well the threat he poses to a relatively green link. That his theme gradually changes into more intense versions as you face him throughout the game is an excellent crescendo on his diabolical development. There are way too many stellar tracks to mention, so I'll end with the incredible credit roll, a sweeping compilation of victory, playfulness, and bittersweet goodbyes. This medley of the game's iconic tunes is crafted brilliantly to highlight everything the soundtrack has to offer, which was nearly enough to claim the number one spot, but ultimately, I had to give that nod to Nier Automata. The game's use of music is outstanding in every way. There are multiple versions of nearly every song that change vocals, tempo, and even to 8-bit renditions for hacking sequences. The sheer amount of work that went into creating this range to ensure every single moment had a context-sensitive version is astounding. These range from simple background tracks to bombastic battle themes. No matter the circumstance, even the mere background tracks hold more gravitas than most other games' central themes, with many having profound emotional impact. Much of this can be attributed to Emmy Evans' superb vocal stylings, utilizing a self-developed chaos language, an imaginative mashup of what multiple prominent languages would sound like a millennia from now. They went that far to give the soundtrack a distinct atmosphere to match the futuristic setting. It made for amazing music to vibe out to, work or study to, and even work out to for the more energetic beats. I've listened to this on repeat dozens of times. I own a collector's vinyl for both it and Replicant, another juggernaut of an album. I would recommend anyone listen to this album, whether they're interested in the game or not, in a heartbeat. There are loads of iconic tracks such as the relaxing city ruins, becoming as gods with birth of a wish, dancing to the enchanting bells of the amusement park, or belting out a beautiful song with the resident opera bot. Beyond the more recognizable choices, there is a buffet of hidden gems. Voice of No Return boasts a powerful string solo backed by slow acoustics and melancholy vocals. It plays upon completing many of the game's side quests, punctuating their bittersweet end. A similar impression is gained from Mourning, a sorrowful song that is wrought with the essence of grief. A natural reaction to tragic events is to isolate, a reaction that is captured well in blissful death. Shutting my eyes paints a picture of falling endlessly into a pit of nothingness, one without danger, merely a slow descent into peaceful reflection. The pace is quickened in War and War's beating march toward inevitable conflict. It feels like a preparatory debrief before the vocals thrust you into the breach of battle. The intense emotion these tracks evoke is capitalized in the anthem of ending E, Way to the World, End of Yorha. An 8-bit interlude of a notable track used in other major endings becomes a medley of each version, the English, Japanese, and Novu French, with a rising choir to back it all. This theme desperately roots you on to reach the game's conclusion, not just for the players who sacrifice for your future, not only for the dozens of hours culminating in one final push, but the choir of the development team, publishers of Platinum, and their families giving you a resounding cheer to see it through to the end. Yes, the very creators and their loved ones call directly to you. 
Things with that kind of creative passion are what drives the industry forward. Just like my choice for the best gaming soundtrack of all time, playing a major role in Nier Automata's unforgettable journey. Thank you for joining me today on this musical tour of my gaming history. I would love to hear about yours in the comments, so please let us know about all the great OSTs I'm sure I missed. And of course, I want to thank you for watching today, much love to you, and I'll see you in the next video.